Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. The name of the Lord. strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved blessed be the name of the Lord service with Hope Sound Bible College tonight. We're thrilled that they got here through all the rain and wind and uh, somehow kept that bus on the road and the rest of you have gotten here safely as well and we're grateful for that and I believe God has something rich in store for us tonight as we worship him through music and testimony, hear about the school and just have opportunity to connect with others in an opportunity like this. So I appreciate the, uh, the Helfenstein Church uh, coming in such uh, style tonight in a beautiful Penview bus. Somebody said maybe, you know, GBS and, and UBC and Allegheny, they might as well pull their buses in here too and make it a, a mini IHC um, the week before. But no, we appreciate that, Brother Cooley and the Helfenstein crowd and and a whole lot of others, uh, family and friends, and we appreciate each of you being here tonight. We're trusting God to bless and help 
in this service tonight. We've already enjoyed a good meal together. Those who felt up to it, they've had a little bit of sickness uh, among their group, and uh, some didn't even make the trip. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna lift them in prayer, aren't we? We're gonna trust God to give them the touch they need and and uh, be able to sing for the glory of God tonight. Amen. I'd like uh, to ask Brother Cooley if you would stand and offer prayer as we begin the service tonight. Father, we thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. We thank you for this opportunity tonight to be together with Hope Sound Choir and their leaders and staff. We pray your blessing upon these moments tonight. Anoint the young folks as they sing and minister in music. Touch our hearts, we pray. We want it to be, of course, far more than just a concert but a time of worship for each and every one of us and a time of honoring and glorifying God. Bless the choir director and the accompanist and watch over all that's said and done in this service and then as well provide financially for the situation as well. We'll give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, it's certainly a, a privilege to have President Malloy be able to be on the bus and along with him tonight. We'll be hearing from him a little bit later on. But uh, Dr. Ryder is going to come and lead us in congregational singing, and from there we'll enjoy the music of the choir. Take your hymnals and turn to hymn number 442. Let's sing together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. Oh! 
Well, it certainly is a delight to be back at Lebanon tonight, and wonderful to be worshiping with all of you and see so many friends. There are people in this crowd, as I've said before, that know stories about me that could be dangerous. <laughs> but it's wonderful to worship with friends tonight and to share together uh, in a setting like this and worship the God of the ages. I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to, to see a video or to have an opportunity to go to one of those places where they put into perspective just how small the earth is compared to the universe. And, you know, they start zooming out and they show the earth compared to the distance of the moon and then some of the other planets and the whole solar system. And, and you could start to feel rather small about yourself in light of how small you are on this world but I'm so thankful tonight that the God of the ages looked down through time and eternity to a little speck on this globe and said that it was worth it to love me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but has everlasting life. Praise his name tonight. We have the best news in the whole world that the God of the ages reached down through eternity and, and offered his son, slain from the foundation of the world for the forgiveness of our sins, for the forgiveness of my sins tonight. That causes my heart to rise up and say, hallelujah, praise his name tonight. He's worthy of our praise, and I love him this evening.
Well, tonight I would like to share a passage of scripture from 1 John chapter 5, 13 through 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we desired of him. Uh, the three things that stood out to me during those uh, verses was that, number one, we can know we have eternal life. And that comes through Jesus Christ coming down on the cross to die for our sins. And we can confess and believe in him and know that we can have eternal life. Number two, we can pray with confidence. We're not just praying to a random statue or anything, but we're praying to God. We can have confidence that he will hear us when we pray. And number three, we can be certain that if he listens, he will give us a definite answer. And uh, he might not give you exactly the desires of your heart, but he will listen and answer um, in whatever ways that he sees fit. Um, I'm just thankful for a God who's the same no matter what season you're going through, and I love him so much tonight. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Standing on your 
children then you hear your children now you are the same god you are the same god you answer prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you were providing then you are providing now you are the same god you are the same god you moved in power then god moved in power now you are the same god you are the same god you were a healer then you are a healer now you are the same god you are the same god you were a savior then you are a savior now you are the same god you are the same god oh god my god i need you oh god my god i need you now how i need you now oh rock oh rock of ages i'm standing on your faithful Tonight, I'm more than happy. I, it's a privilege, a honor to know a self existing a sinless God. One of the, I can say that the greatest of all moment was a moment a sinner came to know a, a Christ. And I have nothing much to say, but one thing that I'm going to post is the cross. Where a sinner like me, he set me free. A cross is the way I find the liberty. A cross is where I find the freedom. A cross is where I find who I am today. And today, I want to boast about the cross. And the second song is, um, uh, when you want to communicate with a friend or even talk to, a, let's say, a person, you at least you got to pay a bill. Huh? But when you want to talk to God, is uh, you can't pay a dollar. We call a royal communication. Huh? That's a privilege. You can probably stay where, wherever you are, in your office, in your home. Or in your school, or probably at the school, you can stay wherever you want. You can communicate to a God of Israel. That is a wonderful one. Praise God.
I'm so thankful tonight for my for my Savior's love and what what that love that he that he shows me and and gave for me um, on the cross. Um, it means that he'll never leave me lonely. That um, even when even when I wasn't faithful to him, praise the Lord, he was faithful to me. I'm so thankful for my Savior's love tonight. Worship with us. Not my will, but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for
Amen. Aren't you thankful for God's love tonight? I'm so glad that he loved me. And uh, I'm reminded of the verse this evening that says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. And I know we've just come through a season of just kind of remembering Christ's death and his burial and resurrection, and we rejoice in that tonight. And I'm glad that when Jesus died on the cross, uh, he said some pretty powerful words right before he passed away. He said, it is finished. Redemption's work was complete in Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm so grateful that we not only can be saved from our sins, but we can be saved from ourselves. And uh, Jesus Christ wants to not only uh, wipe our slate clean, but he wants to come and get rid of the carnal nature on the inside of us and, and dwell in us uh, through the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful that he's done that in my heart and life. And uh, I know that uh, many of the students have been testifying to that as well in this first half. And we thank you so much for being here, worshiping with us. Uh, we are a little under the weather. Most of us are. And uh, it's just one of those things. God's helping us to get through this service. His presence is here. You're supporting. And I want to say thank you so much for that. It really means a lot to us, even as they're dropping like flies. Um, uh, we... Hopefully we'll have a choir that'll come back in in just a few minutes when I call for them. Uh, if not, it's going to be rough uh, because I don't have much of a singing voice tonight. Uh, but we are so grateful for what God is doing. It was just eight weeks ago uh, on our campus that we had a ribbon cutting and a ceremony, and we were able to go into the Crawford Center, a brand new gymnasium on our campus for the very first time. It was a project that was kind of developing for many, many years, and finally we were able to get into that debt-free, and we give God praise for that. He certainly has been providing, and we thank him for that. And it's been a tremendous addition to our campus, as you can imagine, uh, living in South Florida, it does get warm on occasion, and uh, there are a few bugs down there, and there's some rain showers that happen on occasion as well, and to have a facility that we can go in and, uh, and just have... A a you know, uh, events and activities that we can just count on that no matter what the weather does, we can, we can go on. And uh, we're so, certainly grateful for that. Our academy uses the facilities during the day. And then in the evenings, our college students are able to take, uh, are, are able to partake in, in using our gymnasium. And so we really praise God for how he has provided for that. And it's been a huge boost to our, our, our social uh, offerings there at the school. And we, we want to thank God for that. I also want to thank God for his presence that's just been so real since the beginning of this semester. Um, I uh, just rejoice as I think back to our very first chapel service in the second semester. Uh, the students came back and they began to praise God and testify for how he had helped them throughout a Christmas break. And, and it was actually very encouraging to me. I really needed it. Um, I'd, we'd gone, you know, basically two, three weeks without being together. And to get back together and hear how God was actively still working in our students' life was a huge encouragement to me. It boosted my faith, and I said, thank the Lord. We're going to have a great second semester, and uh, God has been so good to give us a wonderful, wonderful second semester. The very next chapel service, uh, God's presence came, and the altar was lined as, as, as students began to seek God for a holy heart, and we praise God for that, and uh, God gave victory, and there were clear, clear testimonies of how God had, had, had met their need, and we thank the Lord for that, and it's continued on. Uh, since that time, uh, we had Seabreeze Camp. If you've never been to Seabreeze Camp, let me just invite you quickly uh, to come Come and join us. It's the best place to be in February, and uh, we'd love to have you uh, the very first part of February uh, for Seabreeze Camp, and you could put that on your calendar and just make plans to bring your whole family. Uh, there's something for children, there's something for teens, and there's something even for moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, and uh, it's just a wonderful time, and this year it was blessed with God's presence. And uh, in, the, in our youth services, there were many, many services where there were not preaching because uh, God just came and took over the service. And, and uh, Brother Andrew Durst was our scheduled evangelist. I think he maybe, maybe preached three times the entire week because God just came in a special way. And that uh, had just a has had a tremendous impact on our, the rest of this semester. Uh, God has just been so faithful time and time again to visit us in our chapel services and just giving our students victory and help. And I, I know you can sense that this evening as many of them are just singing from a heart that knows God and knows him as their savior, knows him as their sanctifier, and uh, we praise God for how he's working and moving in our midst. 
One of the things uh, that we're real excited about as we look towards the future, our motto at Hope Sound Bible College is knowing Christ and making him known. And uh, we feel for the last number of years, God has really helped us to uh, have great programs. Uh, and we have qualified professors who pour into our students and mentor them and disciple them and help them along. And we feel like we've done a pretty decent job of helping our students know Christ, know him more than, than just some historical figure, uh, know him more than just a, a story in the Bible, but know him for a reality in their lives and, and recognizing that he is the savior of the world. And, and uh, so we, we feel like we have done a great job of equipping our, our, our students and having uh, the reality of knowing Jesus Christ. But one of the things that we feel like we could do perhaps a little bit better in is helping equip our students to make Christ known. For years, we've had uh, some wonderful degree programs, ministerial studies and missions and music and education and counseling, and, uh, and the list goes on of all the different programs that we feel are just real solid programs that we offer. Uh, but we feel like that there's a need for just some practical, practical ministry uh, experience as well. And so uh, as we begin our next school year in the fall, we plan to uh, have one week uh, where we are just very intentional about uh, pouring into our students and equipping them with just practical ministry tools. Uh, we'll be uh, suspending classes for that week, and there will be uh, speakers that will come in and share in workshop sessions. And uh, we're also just excited to have Eric Coons come, and he'll be ministering during that time, uh, sharing about his passion for the lost. And uh, if you know Brother Eric, you know that that's going to be contagious and uh, it's going to certainly have an impact on our students. And so we look really forward to that, that special week in the fall. But one of the things that's also going to happen in that fall is we're going to launch our Make Him Known trips. And in the spring semester, uh, we're, we're committing an entire week for all of our students to go on a Make Him Known trip. And uh, that could be ministering in a local context right within the Hope Sound community, ministering to uh, the widows, the orphans, those that are imprisoned. Uh, that we, we have ministry open doors that we can do that right there that week. Uh, but then it also might look like going across the state to the Fort Myers Rescue Mission or, or traveling up to Dearborn, uh, Michigan uh, with the Susans who are, mis are ministering there at Angel House. And it could look like going to Honduras where the Coons are ministering or in Guatemala or South Africa. And the list goes on and on. Our students are going to go on these particular trips and make Christ known. These kinds of trips have had a tremendous impact on my own life. I'll just confess, as a college student graduating, having a, a, a degree in ministerial studies, I kind of felt like maybe missions was something that we needed to uh, maybe focus less on uh, because I recognized the condition of America and I felt like we needed to pour our energy right here into America. America needs God. And that was kind of what I felt uh, burning on my heart. But then I went on a missions trip and it opened my eyes to a much bigger, bigger picture that God has. And I recognize that part of the reason, perhaps, per, that it's Im imperative that we, that we spread the good news of the gospel is, one, because Jesus commanded it. It's part of the Great Commission that we're supposed to go to all the world, not just right here in the United States. And I felt like um, he also helped me to discover that there are people who are hungry who are just longing for the message that we have that some have never heard. And as I had the opportunity to go on 16 different missions trips while I pastored um, at, at Beavertown, uh, God really opened my eyes to, to, to see that there is a white harvest field out there. But the laborers are few. And it's important that we help open our students' eyes to the harvest, I believe. And so we're, we're being very intentional about it. And one week in the spring semester, our students will be going on these Make Them Known trips. Uh, one of the things that I've found that these trips do a great job of is helping um, young people discover their God-given gifts and abilities. A lot of times when they're just right here in their comfort zone attending church with their parents, uh, it's just easy for us to just kind of come and go and not really get involved in the work of the Lord. Uh, but when you're pushed out of the, your comfort zone and you're asked maybe to teach a Sunday school class or you're asked to, to share in a vacation Bible school or you might be asked to sing a song or preach, it's been incredible, as I've witnessed it myself, as young people across the years have found God's purpose and his calling in their life. They discovered abilities that they didn't even realize that they had, and it was a result of, of getting out 
of their comfort zone and doing something for God. And so we trust that these missions trips will do that for our students as well, that some of them are training. They know what God's called them to do. And so these will be great practical uh, trips for them to just plug into ministries across the world and make Christ known. And so we do ask that you would pray for us uh, on your way in. I trust some of you received a bulletin. Did you get a bulletin, some of you? Yes, I see a few out there. Inside that program, uh, there is a, an envelope and there's a card. And I just want to call your attention to uh, the two things that are in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, the first thing is this. We have a, a publication, a magazine that comes out twice a year. It's called The Torch. And it just has some great holiness articles and also uh, just gives you updates about what's happening at the school. And if you would like to receive that, it's free of charge. We would just encourage you to check that box and put your name and your address above that, and then drop that in the offering at the end of the service, and we certainly would appreciate that. And then the, the bottom box that you see there is also an invitation for you to join the presidential prayer team. Uh, once a month, I send out uh, an, an email just letting you know how you can pray for us. Um, the needs are great, but we serve a big God who's never failed us. And uh, I don't ask for money. I just let you know what, what's happening at the school and, and give you like five praises and five prayer requests, and it just helps you to know how you can support us uh, through the avenue of praying. And uh, if you'd be interested in doing that, just check that box, and also make sure you put your email address up above that, and uh, drop that in the offering plate at the end of the service, and uh, we'd be happy to just have uh, that communication with you. Well, I, by faith, I'm, I'm saying that the choir is going to be coming back, and uh, for the second half, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Walter and, and uh, Pastor Loper, Pastor Sickler, for allowing us to be here. Uh, thank you for, uh, for taking us in and, and uh, making sure we're well fed and we have a place to stay tonight. We really, really appreciate it. I know that's no small task, uh, but uh, you guys have been so gracious, and we want to say thank you for that. And it has been a delight for us to be here. We look forward to the second half and uh, what God has in store for us. Let's just continue to worship the Lord. And praise him for his goodness, for his love for us. Took the 
Last night, we had such an amazing service, and every single night we've had such an amazing service, and the Lord continues to come and meet with us. Now, those of you may not know, but there is more 
to us than what you see here. But the devil has been fighting us, but that doesn't matter. Because the God that we serve is the one that you can call upon his name. And it doesn't matter how much you might be struggling. That very same God will come and he will give you strength. I by no means probably should be up here, but I am so glad that I was able to call upon the Lord's name. And I still don't feel 100%, but I am here to worship I don't care what the devil is trying to do to us. I don't care what he's trying to do to me, my body. My body belongs to God and God alone. And I will not let Satan overtake any part of the beauty of this ministry. And I will stand here and I will sing my heart out, even if I feel like I'm about to collapse. Because we serve an amazing God. And I don't know where I would have been countless years ago any decision I could have made could have ended me up in Timbuktu doing whatever my own plan but God stepped in and had a plan for me and it is the least I can do to sit here and bring glory to his name so I would just I don't know who was supposed to testify I apologize (laughs) but (laughs) I would just like to encourage you yes we may be fewer than usual but with God, we can be mighty. Amen. And I would just like to encourage you to continue to worship with us as we sing. I love the lyrics to that song we just sang. Uh, it says, and when the story ends, we know Jesus wins Amen. because his power cannot be stopped. Amen. And I just claim Jesus this evening. Uh, he's mine and he's all powerful and I can trust in him. And I'm so thankful for the hope that I have in Jesus and the hope of heaven. And uh, like this, this song we're getting ready to sing talks about heaven and what a, a wonderful place it is that we're looking forward to. And I, I'm just so excited that the way that I live, um, I can be excited about it. And I have a purpose and, and it's just something that I can, I can wake up and have something to look forward to every day because living in love with Jesus is the best thing.
I'm looking forward to that day. Won't it be wonderful? Love the line in that song that says, it's not a dream. Sometimes when we think about heaven and the future that lies before us, it, it might seem too good to be true, right? To think that no more tears, no more death, no more pain, reunited with those that have gone before us. But it's not a dream. It's the reality for the believers and as that last line says, hallelujah to the risen lamb, it's because of Jesus Christ. He made it possible. He opened the gate that we can go through, and I praise him for that. It's such a privilege and a joy to work with these students. You just get to see them for a little bit. In these times, we come and go rather quickly. We kind of looked like a hurricane hit the fellowship hall this afternoon, Brother Walter. Uh, but we come and go quickly, and it, it's just such a privilege that I have to work with them, to get to know them, to rub shoulders with them. These are wonderful students. And someday they're going to be pastors in your conference. Someday they're going to be teachers in your schools. Someday they're going to be the people that you refer to for counseling. They're going to be the people that are doing ministry. And it starts right now. And we were a little late coming back. You might have seen us running down the hallway because some of these students tonight were driving stakes down because when the devil fights, Jesus proves himself to be so, so true over and over again in countless ways that we don't even know. And so I thank God for his help and his touch tonight. This is all about him. And it's all for his glory. We've been singing a story tonight. And, you know, I pick out these songs. Ugh, that's a big responsibility to pick out songs for a service like this. And I pick them out months and months ago. Because right? we can't start singing these last week and then come sing them for you today. And, but sometimes, you know, themes will emerge for me. Even all these many months down the road. And the theme that has emerged for me tonight, and that we'll sing about just one more time for you, is that Jesus is king. He's on the throne. He's ruling and reigning. There's no doubt about it. Jesus is in charge. And more than just a ruler sitting on a throne with a scepter striking out at us, he's ruling with love and care for his subjects because he knows what's best for us. And he loves us so much that he gave himself for us. So will you join in with us worshiping on one more song as we sing this song that simply says we sing the story of what God has done for the whole world, but what he's done for us in our lives tonight.
sing the story of one so holy who spun the stars into the night. He raised the mountains and carved the valleys. He reigns in righteousness and light. We sing the story of one so lowly, a humble king in manger lay. He walked among us and healed the broken, our prince of peace who and mercy, the sacrifice for sinners slain. But on the morning, just as he promised, the Lamb of God rose from the grave. Jesus the Lamb rose from the grave.
Well, praise the Lord. What a beautiful job they all did. Seemed like they got stronger and stronger, you know? And uh, that, that mid-time spent back there with the Lord, I believe, gave them a, a charge. And uh, it's all, it all was good, but I thank God for his presence and how he's manifested himself among us in this service tonight. Praise God. I, I reminisce so much as I'm getting older, but when we get a group from Hope Sound especially, it takes me back to early years in my life. Dad, you've probably been doing the same. Y'all know where Darla Street is? That was, that was named for my mother. And so there's a special piece of us at Hope Sound. Dad built the second home on that street. And it was just a sand, a sand lane when we lived there. And I rode my bike from that point to Hope Sound for I don't know how many years while we lived there, two miles, I remember it being. And uh, so some great memories. And thanks for bringing Hope Sound to Lebanon tonight. I've enjoyed it. Even if they trashed the Family Life Center. <laughs> I told Brother Ryder, I walked in there and there were suitcases everywhere. I said, you guys have trashed our place. <laughs> but that was, that was the right thing to do. That was the place to, to put those. And uh, we've had a great time this evening. We want to give you an opportunity to give financially to bless the school tonight. Everything you give in this offering will be... Uh, turned over to Hope Sound to bless them and their ministry and their travels. It's not cheap to travel these days by any means, much less to operate the school. And so you can have a little part of that tonight and what you give in supporting the school. I trust you'll do your best in giving tonight. Why don't we all stand? We've been, you've been sitting the whole service, and uh, you probably... Would appreciate an opportunity to stretch your legs a little bit. Does feel a little bit better, doesn't it? And uh, so now dig deep. <laughs> now dig deep and uh, do your best in giving tonight to the school. It's been good to have Brother David Carlson and his mother be able to make the trip and be here tonight. Would you offer prayer for the offering? Ushers, would you come forward? And then we'll pray, and then you all may be seated, and we'll be favored with a special number and song. Brother Carlson.
Well, that energizes you a little bit, doesn't it? Get a foot going or your head nodding. Appreciate that good, good song. Thank you for giving in the offering tonight. We appreciate it so very much. Well, the students have remained that are up here on the, uh, on the risers uh, for at least one reason, and that is we want to connect them with who uh, they may be going home with tonight, okay? So uh, we're going we're gonna to run through this quick, but Dr. Ryder, if you're, if you're ready. We appreciate those who have been willing to keep students. And uh, so what we're going to do is, let me start over here. We'll start over here with the ladies. And um, I'm going to read off the host, and then he'll read the students' names. You guys eye each other up. And when, uh, when you pick up the students, it'll be best, I would assume, because of all the luggage that's trash in the Family Life Center, <laughs> right. that, that you drive down you know, close that way. It'll be easier for them to handle all those uh, suitcases. And uh, then you can go from there. All right, seven o'clock tomorrow morning is uh, time to be here so that uh, they can be on the road to their next destination. Yeah. All right, uh, Jordan and Katie Arno, would you stand, connect here? Uh, Katie's here. Janae Holden, Brooklyn Hamilton, Lexis Skiles, Emma Horde, and Christina Bailey. Got it? All right, the Englands have been very gracious uh, they're actually keeping a total of eight. So of the girls, England's, would you stand? Brianna Levy, Cynthia Lopez, Jalissa Epp, and Abigail Flowers. And of the guys? Christian Grubbs, Brian Hausman, Micah Howie, and Zachary Jackson. And, and there's Mr. A, Elkin Finley. Mr. Yeah, but there's a staff member going there as well. All right. Back to the girls. Uh, Ryan and Joanna Mills. Right over here. Michaela Blow and Caroline Kaufman. David and Candy Gatone, back over there. Emily Bailey, Carissa Peterson, Michaela Belcher, Rachel Belcher. Ken and Linda Hetrick, back up this way. All right. Lisette Bravo, Michaela Dietz. Alan and Kathy Schaefer, right up the middle here. Savannah Dinkle. Anne Marie Reynolds and Emma Saylor. Larry and Martha Shuey, right over this way. Miss Darla Hausman. And uh, the Bells, Paul and Carolyn Bell, are going to take care of this next group. Michaela Schaub, Edlyn Smith, Haley Steidel, Michaela Whitebrecht, Cheyenne Wolf, and Miss Hannah Calhoun. All right. And to the Loper, Scott and Caitlin Loper, over here. Colin Martin and Landon Martin. Leonard and Sharon Robb, over here. Dorian James, Austin Leister, Darren McDonald, and Wesley Mitchell. Glenn and Carlene Spittler. Clifford Namondo and Daniel Ortiz. And those who are blessed to get to stay here at the church, uh, uh, Brother... Pastor Joel will, will be making sure they get to their spot. Lucas Schaefer, Colby Vaughn, Ruben Waki, Ishmael Wereku, Jonathan Wiai, Eliza Marval, and Mr. Tim Gessner. Okay. Which, some of those names sound like they're some of the guys from New Guinea. That's correct. That, that just brought me to mind. I was, I was about ready to call security tonight before service. I was out there in the foyer, and all at once I hear this this tremendous uh, greeting, you know, these guys are, and here these guys from New Guinea had come over from Penview, and the guys from New Guinea came up from Hobe Sound, and they met. They literally collided. I saw it. I mean, chest bumps, like you would, That's right? Awesome. They were into it. They were so excited to see each other, but we survived it. Okay. <laughs> Whew. I stayed out from being in the middle, I'll tell you that. <laughs> President Malloy is going to stay with my wife and I, and then uh, Dwight and Alicia Habecker. Where are they at? Right here. You changed your mind. <laughs> They're keeping us. 
They are keeping us. <laughs> Too late now. All right, hopefully that accounts for all your students and we don't have any having to sleep in the bus tonight. All right, okay. Let's everyone stand. And we're going to prepare to go. Thank you so much for coming. Brother Hartman, was it worth the trip? Is he back there yet? He had to step out. Herb Hartman had to step out. He and his wife drove all the way over here from York. Usually they get a driver to help them come. And it uh, didn't work out tonight. They came in this weather. We appreciate that. And I know others came from quite a distance. Uh, Brother Bill Reese, would you offer prayer and dismissal from the service tonight, please? blessing upon Hope Sound. We're asking, Lord, that you will dismiss us now from this service, travel with us each one to our separate ways, and we'll praise you for every way you work in our lives. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.